about the life, love, and pop pop culture. Hello, everyone. My name is Danielle Delgado. And I'm Sal Masakella, and you're watching Life, Love, and Pop Culture. Welcome to my couch. Thank you. It's really nice and bright. Thank you. Yeah. I figured that it would, um, I got it specifically for this interview so that it would show off our brownness in a good way, our, our melanation. It's really good with our skin. Yeah, yeah. it goes good with the melanin. Yes. See? No, but I I, um, I grew up watching E mm -hmm. and, you know, the Daily Ten. Yeah. And you guys all kind of inspired me to do what I'm doing, so. That's pretty crazy, um, especially since what you're doing is way harder than what we were doing, you know. Um, I don't think so. I do. Really? Yeah, I mean, we went on auditions and, you know, begged them to give us jobs and they gave us jobs, but you have chosen to create your own platform mm -hmm. um, and you didn't wait for people to give it to you. And that's really inspiring. Um, to me, because sometimes, you know, I can be on the phone with an agent or, you know, this one and be like, well, why aren't they calling me back? Or how come, you know, I'm not getting to read for that? And it's a reminder um, that at the end of the day, like, if you want to do something, you got to create it, mm -hmm. um, which is what I try to do more and more um, in my little journey. But um, thank you for saying After that. After your time on the Daily 10, you've done so many, like, amazing things. Like, I can't even, like, tell you guys how many things like he's done music yeah he's a philanthropist i think i saw you did a clothing line and production and all this stuff so tell yeah. me how life has been after that show well the daily 10 was a real gift in that it taught me um how to be a professional before i got on the daily 10 i really enjoyed being on camera and i i'd, I'd been doing some really great things mm -hmm. um I started off at MTV, I was at ESPN um, as a host of the X Games, which I continued to do while I was at E. Mm -hmm. But being in a studio every day and just getting the reps on camera, getting the reps at working and producing a show, um, getting the reps at, at writing and going out and doing junkets and working like a full-time job, mm -hmm. you know, 60, 70 hours a week sometimes with the show, it just made me focused and it made me it gave me confidence when I left there to be like okay there's no way I was supposed to be able to do that and I did mm -hmm. so from now on what else what else what do I want to do that I've been afraid to do that I, that I just can go and give a hundred percent like I was doing here mm -hmm. um, and one of those things was music. Like music was something that I've always been passionate about. My dad was um, a prolific trumpet player um, and musician who I, I grew up, you know, on tour with, and, and I grew up making music. Um, and I finally had some free time, and I was like, you know, the one thing that I really want to do that I haven't done mm -hmm. is make a record. Yeah. So I decided to go in the studio with my cousin, and I had been singing back up on a lot of friends' albums. Um, quietly and no one really knowing but a lot of those artists being like um when are you gonna make your thing bro mm -hmm. uh and that's how alakazam was born my last name is masakella mm -hmm. backwards it's alakazam and i wanted to i didn't want to use my name sal masakella to, to make a record because i didn't want people to be like why is the guy from T TV yeah. making music? Especially when people don't know that music is your background. Mm -hmm. You know, and people are so quick to be like, you know, who does he think he is? Stay in your lane or whatever. So I said, you know, if I can do it under a name that is still me, that, but that people have to figure out, maybe it'll give the music a chance um, to resonate. And people will listen to that first and then want to find out who it is. Yeah. And then from a television perspective, I definitely made the decision that I did not want to have a real studio job mm -hmm. um, anymore because I'm a traveler. Yeah. You know, I'm a traveler and a storyteller at heart. Mm -hmm. I like going places and discovering new things, new people, and telling stories. Mm -hmm. And I had taken a two month sabbatical during the World Cup in South Africa and gone to ESPN. ESPN sent me to do. Um, to be a human interest reporter during the World Cup and tell stories about South Africa. So I took a break from the Daily Ten to go and do that. Mm -hmm. And that really filled my soul. You know, I was spending time meeting people 
who had lived these incredible lives under challenging circumstances in this country that has so much history and so much to teach us. Mm -hmm. And I came back to the show, to the Daily Ten, and I was like, okay, I'm ready for this to be over. Like, I'm grateful, yeah. but that's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And so when the show got canceled, they kept everyone mm -hmm. um, and rolled them in the E! News, except for me. Yeah. And I was like, I think they expected me to freak out, and I was like, thank you. And they still owed me a year on my contract. So I had some time to sort of experiment and, and, and take some chances. And, um, you know, since then, I got to go to Vice and mm -hmm. create a show called Vice World of Sports, um, which was an incredible journey. I mean, I went to Cuba and the Dominican Republic and Kenya and Ghana and Australia and Europe and did a bunch of stories here through the States and, you know, made two really powerful seasons of, of television. We got nominated for two Producers Guild Awards. Um, I won my first Producers Guild Award as an EP. The first show that I EP'd, I get, got to win an award for, and um, we were nominated for an Emmy this year, a sports Emmy. And it was, you know, it was fun and, and validating and the kind of thing that gets you excited to do more. And when I finished my run on this show, I got an, uh, an opportunity at National Geographic, and so um, a correspondent at National Geographic uh, Explorer for this new season that uh, airs in the fall. So basically he does everything. <laughs> <laughs> You're just talking about like the story, even it got rejected. I think this is a really important story to share with everybody because, um, you know, people, sometimes they get discouraged when they get rejected, but you got rejected and you kept going. Yeah. My first, um, my first opportunity, I'd been working in um, the snowboarding industry for a while, and I started, and I was announcing, like, I was the guy that was at the event that you'd hear on the loudspeaker announcing the event. And I tried to have fun with it, and people sort of would be like, that guy's funny. Yeah. Like, he doesn't just announce what the, the tricks, but, you know, he's talking shit, and and I, I wanted the crowd to feel like we were all there together at a party. Mm -hmm. So people would call me to come to different events. And it was, it was rad, I wasn't getting paid for it, but maybe they'd buy me a plane ticket to come to this contest and give me lift tickets at the mountain. You know, I'd be like, yeah, this is amazing, you know, put me up in a hotel. Um, and when the sports started to get popular and people were putting them on TV, all of a sudden you had MTV and ESPN doing the X Games and MTV was doing this thing called the MTV Sports and Music Festival and suddenly everybody wanted this new thing like, oh my God, snowboarding, skating, surfing, BMX, like alternative culture, like there's kids that are spending millions of dollars, we gotta go get it. And I remember MTV was doing the Sports and Music Festival and they were looking for voices, like people to be with their VJs but who could explain the sports. So they called up my old magazine where I used to work at as, as, as an intern. And they're like, do you have any, any, are there any people that could be good on camera? Mm -hmm. and they're like, well, we got this one guy who can't shut up, <laughs> you know, and he does a lot of events named Sal. Like, he's great, he snowboards, he knows all the guys, um, all the athletes, male and female. And, you know, he's of the culture, you should, you should get him. The first time that I got an opportunity to get an audition at MTV, I took a train up from San Diego, and I'll never forget, took a train up from San Diego, and then a bus to MTV at the time was still in the Universal building, which was crazy, like downtown to the valley. I had no concept of time, because when you come to LA, you're just like, what is this? And um, I went, did the audition, thought I crushed it, and they came back to me, and said, you know, you're a nice guy, but we don't really think that you have it. Mm -hmm. You know, you might want to find something else. And I just remember being like, wait a minute, this is my shit, like, what do you mean I'm not the guy? And they had chosen to hire this girl from Texas who claimed she was a pro snowboarder, who was blonde haired and blue eyed, no one in our community knew who she really was. Mm -hmm. 
And I remember watching that year at home, just like, what is happening? And nice person, she was the wrong choice. Clearly didn't have the talent. Um, and it was embarrassing. And I remember even being more dejected, like, wow, they were willing to choose this person who is horrible on camera over me who, like, this is my actual world. Yeah. Like, maybe I don't know how to be a host, but, like, I'll figure it out. And I, it bummed me out, and I was really dejected. The following year, they were doing the MTV Sports and Music Festival again, and they called me back. It was a different person there. I don't know if they'd seen the tape or whatever, but they called me back, made me audition again, and this time I got the job. And it, I remember it always being, and it ended up being a real jumping off point for me. You've done so many things already, but what do you want your fans to remember you for the most? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know that I've done the thing that I want my fans to remember me for the most, like singularly, no. But I would like, I would say that I would want my fans to remember me as someone that they viewed as genuine, as someone who they viewed as authentic, like someone that they viewed as like, when they see me on camera, in whatever it is I'm doing, they feel like, yo, that's the dude that I could be on the couch with hanging out. Um, as someone who didn't talk down to anybody, and made them feel a part of whatever it is um, that I'm doing. Well, thank you so much for opening up to me. Are you kidding? Yes. I mean, listen, I think that, like I told you at the beginning, the manner in which you do what you do is, is very, very inspiring. Every event that I've seen you at, you know, you're, you're out there, you're a one-woman band, <laughs> and, um, you know, you're, 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 you're fighting for your space and your ability to tell stories. And uh, like I said to you before, like I really, really admire that, you know? You show up here by yourself with all the gear, you're the camera woman, you're the audio person, you're the interviewer, and um, there's no one more tenacious about getting an interview. <laughs> and tenacity is the key, and I admire that, you know, and that's why for me, I was like, yeah, absolutely. You're wonderfully relentless. Thank you. <laughs> and that's going to move you forward in whatever it is that you want to do. Cross my fingers. Well, you're, you're, you're doing it. Thank you. And thank you guys so much for watching. And don't forget to tune in next time as we discuss more life, love, and pop culture. life love and pop pop culture if you enjoyed my interview subscribe to my youtube channel and don't forget to look out for new videos every wednesday